and welcome back to the Reapers. So today we're in our F5 Tiger 2. We're looking at taxiing, taking off and landing. So first of all, taxiing, absolutely super simple. Only one button that we're interested other than our usual flight buttons, which is nose wheel steering button. You will need to hold that down to allow the nose wheel to steer. Uh, so thrust forward, hold the nose wheel steering down and it gives us a pretty decent axis of movement. Regard speed, I mean it's not real life, so you can get up to about 50 knots on the ground in a straight line if you want, and about a maximum of about 20 when turning, uh, if it's not too sharp a corner. Uh, so let's get ourselves set up on the threshold. Once we're in place on the runway, it can be a little bit finicky, so when you're in place, run forward a bit with your nose wheel steering button held, and just to make sure that we're moving it's in a straight line. Uh, then release the nose wheel steering button and wheel brakes on. The reason we did that is because it's possible to line up on the runway and have your nose wheel steering uh, kind of cocked to the left or to the right. If you've ever seen people crash in any of our videos that we make it's because they forgot to do that straightening out to make sure that the nose gear was straight. Okay now when we take off we're not going to be using the nose wheel steering we're just going to be using the rudder. The rudder comes into action about 50 knots or over um, so as long as we're roughly straight on the runway we won't have a problem. If there's a major crosswind Wind, like really major crosswind you may need a little, little bit of nose wheel steering at the beginning to uh, keep yourself straight and level below 50 knots uh, or if you haven't lined yourself up properly you may need a bit of nose wheel steering just to uh, to straighten yourself up to begin with right flaps um, I keep them in automatic mode I know they say full at the moment but they're in automatic so that they will basically come down when the aircraft is below a certain speed I'm not actually sure what the speed is probably about 250 knots to 200 knots something like that it just means we don't have to worry about putting the flaps up or down we want to jack our nose wheel up so this switch here wants to go forward you can see the nose is rising this gives us extra angle of attack it has quite a high wing loading the air 5 so we do need to get quite fast um, to to, to take off so that's just something that helps us take off regards to the takeoff we're going to hold wheel brake on we're going to spool up to mill power then when we're spooled up to mill power mill power is max power without the afterburner by the way uh, then we're going to go full power with the afterburner and release the wheel brakes uh, we're going to keep leveled going down the runway with the rudder left and right we're going to rotate at between 130 to 140 knots which we can see on the speedo here we're going to rotate up to 10 degrees. Uh, we don't want to go any higher than 10 degrees because we can risk uh, a tail strike. I mean, that, that rule is pretty much the same with any aircraft. Don't go below, don't go above 20 degree, uh, 10 degrees. Sorry, Some airplanes, you can't even go that high. Then once we're rotated, we're going to hold that rotation angle until the plane takes off. Now, when the plane takes off is up to the plane, basically, and it depends how heavy it is. If it's really, really lightweight, it'll take off straight away. If it's medium weight, kind of like it is now, full fuel but no stores, it'll take off about... 150 160 knots if it's really heavy uh, if it's got fuel tanks and full stores and full fuel then it may go all the way up to 200 or just below 200 before it takes off be patient don't rota rotate any further than uh, 10 degrees it won't help it'll just uh, add more drag it won't really increase lift and you risk a tail strike how do you tell you're at 10 degrees? Well, we don't have a pitch ladder on the HUD. All we've got here is an artificial horizon here. To be honest, it's a bit too small for me to see. So uh, in planes like this, I just do the 10 degrees by eye. Uh, I've just done so many rotations in my time that you just get to used to what to 10, 10 degrees is. When the plane lifts off, keep on full power. Um, I should say some planes you can take off with military power only. This you can't. It's just the engines are just too puny, so always go full power. There's no point with messing around with uh, military power. Once you're up, keep the burners on until you're about 250 to 300 knots. Um, and if you want to climb uh, relatively soon, then keep the burners on for longer than that. After we could take off, we're going to put ourselves in a left-hand circuit, 1,000 feet AGL, 300 knots. We're going to go round to a downwind, and then we'll talk about the landing. So let's get on with it. We'll break on spool to mill power. Wait, wait for the turbines to go. Full power release. It's shifting left, so correct with the rudder. And that was that's what I was saying there about um, uh, until you're over 50 knots, the rudder basically won't have any authority. So you've got a little bit of wiggling at the beginning. If it gets really extreme, you can use the nose wheel steering again to um, to straighten it out. So it's just something that takes a bit of getting used to. So accelerate fast, three, uh, 130, sorry, rotate, 10 degrees, and she's up. Gear up with the G key, and she's away. So 
So that was a lovely um, easy takeoff. Uh, rotation was easy and it took off about 150 knots because we're light. Uh, just note in the Tiger, because of its high wing loading, if you're really heavy with uh, stores, um, it may need to be going pretty fast before you take off. So like I said, don't be impatient, just wait for it. Uh, simple as that. Burners on until we reach um, 300. We need to trim down immediately because she's heavily trimmed up from takeoff. 300 knots. 1,000 for, going for 1,000 for AGL, left hand circuit, and I'll report back on the downwind. Okay, we're on our downwind now. We're about 300 knots, 1,000 feet AGL, 2,000 feet ASL. Um, if whenever we're in visual conditions landing like this, we're going to be landing from uh, a circuit like this. So we're going to be turning into a base turn and then on to a final. Uh, if you want to know more about circuits, if you look in our educational general section, we've got a tutorial that we did with a couple of us guys showing how to do them. So just looking ahead, when it was stand on downwind now about one to two miles, maybe maybe two or three miles just for this tutorial so we get more talking time. Um, we're not going to be really interested in using our air brakes. We're, what we're going to do is use the base turn as we turn left onto the final. That's we're going to use aerodynamic braking uh, to get us down to our approach speed. Now the approach speed uh, it's going to depend on our loadout. Um, so if we're relatively light like we are now, we've got a full tank of fuel but no stores, um, our approach speed, I'm happy to do just over 150 knots. Um, you don't have to be pinpoint perfect, but just over 150 knots is a good safe speed like that. Like I said, the flaps are going to... Uh, uh, deploy themselves so we don't have to worry about that so all we need to worry about really at the moment is uh is getting that speed off of that turn if we were heavy with stores um a real f5 often won't land with really heavy stores but uh in dcs you often will especially if you're practicing um you're going to want to ramp that up to probably over 200 knots um uh, for the approach and we'll talk about the actual landing in a bit so let's get that section done now Okay, we're going to start turning in now. We're going to reduce the throttle a bit just so that we can burn off some speed during this turn. Altitude, we're going to slightly sink um, because... Um, actually, no, altitude's okay. About 1,000 feet. If we're about two miles out, it should be fine. Uh, we're going to aim to uh, turn in so that when we complete our base turn, we are at an altitude that represents a three-degree descent, a standard visual approach, three-degree ascent um, until we hit the runway. You can either work that out on your head or just do it from uh, old experience, basically. Coming right off the gas now, halfway through the base turn. Because we're getting slower now, we need to start adding a little bit of pitch up. Introducing some angle of attack. You can see down in the bottom left there, we're about, whoops, we're about 15 degrees angle of attack. That is our warning that we're going below 200 knots and we need to put our gear down. So that's fine. We're going to put our gear down with G. Gear down. I've slightly overshot the runway, but it doesn't really matter. Adding power now because we don't want to lose too much speed through this correction. Right. And we'll just level up now. Uh, so let's uh, finish talking about the approach and uh, landing. So um, I can be just over 150 knots, 160, 170 for the approach at the current weight. Um, I'm going to touch down, I'm going to feather just before I hit the runway, and I'm going to touch down at 150 or just slightly below. If I was heavy with stores, I'm going to approach 200 or just above. I'm going to touch down just feather and touch down just below 200. Um, the gear is pretty tough, the tyres are tough, so we don't have to worry about it. As long as we feather and have a decent uh, vertical, um, uh, a soft touch on the runway basically, we don't have to worry about tyres like you do with some planes. We don't have to worry about coming in uh, at high speeds on the low runway because we've got a parachute, which we'll talk about. Uh, we press the P to deploy the parachute. As long as we're below 200 knots, the parachute's going to be fine. If you don't want to press B, you can pull that handle there with a the left click on the mouse. Uh, so that's it. Um, just the uh, usual things we need to look out for. Angle of attack here. Make sure it doesn't rise too high. If it does, power on and then go around or you can um, uh, power on and basically power through. Uh, that's it really. So let's get on with it. Oops. So I'm going to start introducing some angle of attack. About 15 degrees should do us. Whoops. Sorry, I went too fast. I was talking. Right, so I'm going to come off the power. Just get it back under control. Going to trim now. So all this time we're trimming to keep the plane neutral, so we've got plenty of control on the stick. Right. Start coming down on the speed now. 
Start ramping the angle of attack up a bit. 170 knots now. We'll go a little bit lower. It still feels fairly light and in control. 15 degrees alpha. Right, that's our max. I don't want to go any more than that. Speed is good at 160, 170. A bit more trim. So we get a bit more control. Speed is good. And now we're going to come off the power and look to feather in now. Go for a nice soft touch. Uh, not the best, but it'll do. Dab of brake. Rudder to keep us straight. Press P for the parachute. Out she comes. The wheel brakes are pretty measly, so you will need the parachute. Uh, to get the parachute back after a flight, you just need to refuel and rearm, and it'll automatically do it. Uh, I was pumping the... didn't say that, but I was pumping the brakes there as well. You don't really need to, but you can. Press P and hold P to release the chute. Uh, well that's it done there so just the main thing to note there is the speeds I went at if you read the manual it'll say you want to land at something like 130 knots or something approach at 130 knots bear in mind that when manuals say that it's uh, expecting you to be in a uh, configuration for landing i.e. very low fuel and probably no stores if you try to land like um, 130 knots or 140 knots with a full tank of gas like we've got or with stores on you will crash always remember to adjust your speed accordingly to the stores and the weight of your aircraft at the time um, that's all I've really got to say on that I hope that helps and I'll see you later